13 WMAZ Morning starts now. Well, somebody woke up the tropics and our temperatures for the day because they are both going to be on fire, to put it mildly. We'll talk about it all coming up. A Dodge County man accused of killing his neighbor over a pet fight is now dead. What we know from the sheriff this morning. And time sticking leading up to the November election. We break down how you can prepare to make sure your vote counts. And the Georgia Academy for the Blind in Macon is making sure its students are set up for success in the workplace. I'll show you how they're getting hands-on experience to help launch their careers. Well, good Wednesday morning, Central Georgia. You're taking a live look over a beautiful downtown Macon. The time is now 631 on this 21st day of September. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. I'm Juan Reyes. And I'm Caitlin Heck. We are nearing the end of September, but it is feeling a lot more like summertime with these temperatures it, we're seeing. Exactly. It's starting to feel like summer, but it's looking like fall, Alex, with temperatures in the seven day and also with the tropics heating up. Yeah, that's right. We do have a big cold front coming in tomorrow night, which will drop our temperatures after the very warm day we'll have today and tomorrow in the tropics. They are heating up as well as Juan just said. We'll talk about it all here over the next 30 minutes. Six 66 is what we're doing in Macon right now. It's fairly warm compared to where we have been the past few mornings. 67 in Byron, 68 Fort Valley, as well as in Warner Robins. 67 in Cochran, 64 over in Lawrence County this morning. Some more 60s down towards the south. 63 in Eastman, 66 in McRae, and 67 in Rochelle. Hanging on to 70 in Taylor County this morning. The radar picture, it's not actually raining out there. It's picking up on the humidity we have out there. Don't be surprised to run into some fog in a few spots, especially close to any water we have around central Georgia. But the temperature is going through the roof this morning 95 by the time we get to this afternoon average high is 87 so well above where we should be for this time of year sunrise comes your way at 722 which is going to be on a downright hot day for the mid to end of september big heat today and tomorrow cold front arrives late tomorrow we'll talk about that plus the caribbean coming up here in just a few minutes Thank you, Alex. We'll check in with you soon. This morning, we have an update on the Dodge County man accused of killing a neighbor over a dog and cat fight. The Dodge County Sheriff says Ronnie Reeves killed himself in jail. We told you about murder charges against the 71 year old earlier. Sheriff Brian Robinson says Reeves shot his neighbor, David Ussery, after an argument over their pets. The sheriff arrested Reeves Friday and booked him into the Dodge County Jail. Robinson says jail staff found Reeves dead around 1030 Monday night. The sheriff says it appeared that Reeves killed himself. On social media, friends of David Ussery say that they're going to be holding a concert dedicated to his memory on Saturday. The host says they'll put out donation jars and the funds will go towards funeral expenses. It's at the Pond Town stage from 8 p.m. to 11 p.m. in Rhine. Well, Sheriff Joel Cochran says officers in Washington County arrested close to 27 people for the sale of illegal drugs as part of the Summer Breeze drug sweep. These drug arrests range from the sale of crack, cocaine, morphine, MDA and meth. For months, the investigation has been underway, which was started by the Washington County Sheriff's Office and the Okmulgee Drug Task Force. As the investigation grew, other agencies were brought in to assist. Yesterday, 15 people were taken into custody. Officers are currently searching for others with outstanding arrest warrants for the sale of illegal drugs. Well, the Georgia Supreme Court upheld the conviction of one of two Perry men involved with the murder of teen Sam Poss. We've been covering this case since 2016. That's when two friends, Brandon Warren and Dakota White, killed Poss, their Perry High School classmate. They then buried him in woods outside of Perry. White was 17, Poss and Warren were 18 at the time. Both White and Warren were sentenced to life in prison without possible parole. Now, Warren had requested a new trial, saying that his defense lawyer was ineffective. But in yesterday's ruling, the state's highest court wrote that Warren did not prove his lawyer did not represent him properly or that it affected the outcome of the case. 634 here on your Wednesday morning. Believe it or not, Central Georgia, we're seven weeks out from the November general election. It is going to be here before mm -hmm. we know it for sure. Now, while Georgia officials are getting ready, leaders across the country say they're being swamped with records requests. County election offices here in Central Georgia say they too have seen an increase in requests, especially since the 2020 election. Well, Tom Gillen with the Bibb County Board of Elections says they're mostly seeing them from Republican groups. Andy Holland with Housing County's Board of Elections says that they're seeing them from both Democrats and Republicans, as well as nonpartisan groups. But both Gillen and Holland say they sometimes get copied and pasted template requests. Officials have been asking have been asked for everything from ballot images, logs of scanned absentee ballots, tapes from the tabulator and what's been done on election management computers. I don't know if it's disinformation or just not a complete picture or if it's just genuine interest. Uh, I think a lot of people are just genuinely interested now. It's been in the news more. Um, Georgia elections are in the spotlight more. 
So I think people are just generally getting interested in the elections process and, and want to know how it works and learn more about it. Holland says they've had to change their workflow because of the number of those records requests. So you might have questions about the voting process. So here are some key things that you need to know. In Georgia, you can register to vote at the age of 17 and a half. You can't vote until you're 18, but you can register six months before your 18th birthday. You can check your voter registration status on the Secretary of State's website. Now your status might say inactive, meaning you haven't voted in several years, but that doesn't mean you have to re-register. You can still vote. If you need to register, you can go online or to your local registrar's office to do that. And looking ahead, U.S. Senate candidate Herschel Walker plans to make a stop here in Central Georgia a week from today. He's scheduled to appear at the Gun Club on Rumble Road near Forsyth from 11.45 a.m. to 12.45 p.m. 636 in your news from across the state this morning. The Georgia Supreme Court will hold off on a death row inmates appeal. Thursday, the court heard arguments from lawyers for Virgil Delano Presnell Jr. in an attempt to overturn his conviction and death row sentence for a second time. Uh, Presnell has been behind bars since 1976. Right now he's convicted of killing an eight year old girl and raping her 10 year old friend after abducting them as they walked home from school. Back in May, a date was set for Presnell's execution, but his lawyers argued the state's conditions weren't met before the execution was scheduled. They also argue that he is cognitively disabled. A judge said that they failed to prove that. Alrighty, then continuing on this week, Atlanta City Council approved a nearly $3 million plan to convert part of the city jail into a diversion services center. Monday's approval fills the goal to make the Atlanta City Detention Center into a place founded around restorative justice practices and principles. Although the facility, which former Mayor Keisha Lance Bottoms vowed to close, will continue housing inmates under a deal with the county. Now, Mayor Andre Dickens said in a statement that it marks a proactive approach to addressing some of the root causes of crime. Well, the Senate subcommittee chaired by Georgia Senator John Ossoff revealed nearly 1,000 unaccounted prison deaths across the U.S. Ossoff says those deaths were unreported because the Department of Justice doesn't follow a federal law meant to make clear who is dying behind bars, where they are dying, and why they are dying. The hearing yesterday focused on abuses in state and local detention systems and the Department of Justice not complying with the reporting law. Well, the city of Dublin continues to celebrate its new police chief. Back in 1998, Keith Moon began his career in Dublin as a patrolman before being promoted to corporal, sergeant, and later lieutenant. He says becoming chief's always been his dream. His three main goals are to support, uh, support and safety of these officers, connections with the community, and increased training for officers. Moon says communication starts with the patrol division. The fact of the matter is about 85% of the time we're just out there mediating, communicating, trying to resolve issues with people. Even sometimes people call us because we're their sounding board. Now Moon says right now he is working on getting new computer systems for patrol cars by the end of the year. Now if you missed any of our top local news headlines and the newscast, don't you worry. You can catch them whenever you'd like. Download the 13 WMAZ Plus app on your Roku or Amazon Fire devices, and you can start streaming them right now. The time is now 6.39 here on your Wednesday morning. We've been talking about it all this morning, turning our eyes to the tropics mm -hmm. in Central Georgia. Right now is a good time to make sure you have that weather radio, the 13 WMAZ app, and yes. make sure you have a plan yeah. just in case we experience any severe weather, tropical weather here in our area. Yes, better to be prepared than caught off guard. Yeah, and that 13 WMAZ Plus app, it's kind of new, but it's really great mm -hmm. because it gives Ben, Taylor, Jordan, myself, and other outlets to share information with you more frequently as we head through the day. So, for example, during the morning, I'll do another update there on that, uh, and you'll be able to see that between our morning shows and our noon shows. So, a great resource there. Let's talk about that and the weather we've had coming our way today. It's going to be hot across central Georgia, to put it mildly. Take a look at the current temperatures. We are a few degrees warmer than we have been the past few mornings. 66 here in Macon, 68 in Warner Robins, 68 in Soperton, 70 still in Forsyth, and 67 down in Rochelle across the southeast. A few showers there, parts of central southern Alabama on over towards the Florida Panhandle and then down to the Florida Peninsula. Otherwise, it's mostly quiet across the southeast. But as we head into the day today, we are going to be shooting those temperatures through the roof and then some 90 by the noon hour into the mid 90s this afternoon. We do have relief on the way though not before we warm back up into the mid to upper 90s tomorrow afternoon those showers you see up along interstate 20 this is a front that's going to begin to slide on through wild temperatures are in the 90s later on in the evening we'll fall back down into the 60s as the front comes through brings drier air brings cooler air then for friday only getting into the low 80s before all is said and done so 95 today 96 for tomorrow 84 for friday 85 there on saturday we begin
begin to warm back up into the weekend before we get to next week and another front arrives. So here's front number one with the drop in humidity. Front number two arrives late Monday into Tuesday. All right, let's talk about the tropics. We've got a lot going on. Category four, Hurricane Fiona, which is not all that far away from us here in central Georgia. Tropical storm Gaston up there in the north central Atlantic. Not a concern to us. We're not going to worry about these systems that are out in the Atlantic just yet because this one up in front is the one that poses the most risk as of right now. This is the GFS and the Euro running side by side. Look how well in agreement they are here as we head into next week. Pull this into Wednesday morning. Both show a strong tropical system entering the Gulf of Mexico. Of course, anytime we see that, especially this time of year, it catches our eye here in central Georgia. So this would be next Wednesday at 6 a.m. Uh, the more lines you have, the stronger the storm is, the closer the lines are, the stronger the storm is. So and you can see it, you know, only about 150 to 200 miles of difference there is pretty close in the grand scheme of things when we're talking about a week out. So something we're going to be watching very closely here in the Weather Center. But before we get there, we've got several days to go through, including two very hot days today being one of them. 95 going to be the high temperature hot for the bus ride home and it's going to be again just downright hot. There's no other way to describe it. Hot, hot, hot today here in central Georgia. Also going to be hot tomorrow as well. A high temperature of about 96. There comes the seven day. Then that front arrives back down into the 80s for the weekend. Check out Saturday morning. How about 56? 20% chance of rain there on Sunday and Monday.